morning, good afternoon, wherever you're tuning in. I am on the other side of the world in Amsterdam, uh, and I am joined by a lovely couple in Queensland, a power couple, if you would, of Ultimate, uh, Dom Simpson and Liam Grimmond. Uh, how are you guys doing today? Yeah, fantastic. Pretty good. Pretty good. Been very rainy, so I haven't done much. Yeah, a little bit rainy. Well, you you don't want to know anything about the skies here in Amsterdam. Uh, don't complain about the weather. You're very lucky where you are, I'll tell you that much. Uh, but we are here today to talk a little bit about the upcoming AUC, Australian Ultimate Championship, uh, that's coming up that's uh, amidst a global pandemic that's had uh, its shares of ups and downs. And I, I've heard some have uh, had profound, distinct effect on the Queensland team. So we'll we'll start there. We'll, we'll start with Dom. Uh, Dom, as I know, you're still part of the leadership for Fuse Club in Brisbane? Yeah, so I was helping coach this season with Fuse. Okay. Player yeah. coach or independent coach? Player coach, yeah, alongside with Anson. So, yeah, player coach. Okay, awesome. Uh, well, then we'll, we'll start. Tell us about the season uh, from, yeah, the, the start till now. When did it start? How were selections conducted uh, right up until uh, tournament play and until we, where we are now? All right. So we started our season in January where we ran selections through a women's league this time because we weren't certain if Nationals was going to go ahead. So we ran a women's league to try and help train people up to see everyone over a course of about six weeks. And then we selected our team from that women's league. And then we went pretty hard where we did two trainings a week. Didn't do any warm-up tournaments because, again, we couldn't really travel because of COVID. So we stayed in Brisbane up until, well, yeah, this month. We had two trainings a week. And then we did a monthly training camp because we had a interstate player this year. So we they would come up for the training camps and then we would train every week. So that was our season currently. Who, and, who is your interstate player? Um, Kaya Weir. Okay. From, so okay. very good pickup for us. I have heard her name. She, I think she came on the scene since I've left, but uh, I have uh, heard she does some wonderful things. Uh, so you guys didn't have a, a warm-up tournament at all, the training camps and, and uh, a Brisbane League, a, a women's league? Yeah. Yeah, so we had like a regional regionals, I would say, where we had a few townspeople come down. But besides from that, we opted out of it because we were uncertain what COVID, what was going to happen with COVID, basically. So we right. just opted to stay in Brisbane. Okay, which we will get uh, to very shortly, what has happened with COVID. But uh, before we get there, let's uh, get the same story from Liam. Uh, in Brisbane, has the men's club uh, fared the same as the women's? Are you guys doing things similar, a little bit different? Tell us about Mammoth. Yeah, funnily enough, um, pretty similar role to, to Dom. I'm finding myself as a player coach this season for Mammoth. Um, we've had uh, a few old heads step away after this season, as they should, to focus on on other things. So, um, you know, the core of myself, Alan Elliott have really, uh, you know, stepped up uh, as, as well as TiVo to really, um, you know, make sure that we're providing the same opportunities for younger players that we were afforded. Um, so that's what this season has really been about for me is we've brought in a lot of rookies, a lot of people, a lot of potential who we see can be great contributors on, the, on a 24 uh, sort of stage. Um, and I just wanted to make sure this season they've got the same opportunities I was provided um, obviously, yeah, we had a late start to this season. We kind of started in January, and normally by then you want, you know, you want your team selected. You want to know what structures you're running, and you know you're refining all these structures uh, in the lead up with warm up tournaments. But um, yeah, all we had was one night a week where we'd really train, uh, get stuck in. Uh, we'd squeeze fitness into there as well, so we're really making the most of it because uh, you know everyone's lives is a, a bit up in the air at the moment. Well, our nationals is only confirmed in January, so. Exactly right. Yeah. So yeah, really, really short season, but we knew that we had to sort of make the most of the time uh, that we were given, regardless if nationals were to go ahead or not. Um, but yeah, we'll talk about that later. But yeah, um, we try to make the most out of the season by bringing a few uh, younger faces in and really just getting to the standard that we're we're happy at and where they can uh, you know go out and be the next uh, face of Brisbane Ultimate. Really cool. Uh, just a, a, a quick follow up with that. You guys are defending champions i guess at this stage a two-year hiatus so 
Uh, we were yeah. with the as, one seed. As far no, as the care. carryover no, of the no. roster, uh, how many players uh, or what percentage of the team, if you take a stab in the dark, was on the championship squad uh, two years ago? I'd probably say three quarters are still around, but the pieces we lose are notable. Okay. Um, so like from the offensive line, we're losing a Zed Permac and a Cal Spielman, two very right. big pieces of the low line, as, as well as Bonnie. Um, right. Uh, and obviously, J Mac uh, stepped away for a lot of this season as well. Um, there was talk of maybe getting him in for nationals, which would have been a great boon for the boys. But, um, but yeah, but really, it was uh, a lot of really big contributors. Um, okay. Stepped away, but, uh, yeah, we had we had other people sort of stepping into those roles. Like I'm sure if you watched the finals in 2019, Steph, you were seeing Elliot pretty much single-handedly take over that game. So I, I like did watch. Uh, yeah. I I don't miss much Ultimate. Uh, I definitely was uh, was on top of that game. I did watch. It's great uh, that you've got the percentage of your core, but you like you said, a, a couple key pieces missed. So hopefully. Uh, everybody kind of uh, next man up mentality and they all take over those roles. However, we are at uh, a situation where where this is not uh, happening. So why don't you guys tell us about uh, the last two weeks? Uh, as I imagine, I think that's the timeline where this news has come. Uh, but what is the news from the after and, and how has this decision uh, been, been taken care of or, or been dealt with uh dom why don't you start uh, when did you first hear the news and, and, and tell us what this news is i guess i found out uh, sunday last week was when i found out it was we got the COVID case and then we were entering a lockdown but i found out that we there was talk that we couldn't leave brisbane to go to nationals and then i found out through leadership in my club and then we told our club this is happening we're not quite sure what's happening yet. And then we got the news from after saying that Brisbane, none of the Brisbane teams would come, I think on Wednesday is when we got that news. And then the Thursday we had lockdown lifted and then we tried to petition to get back in, but they said no. Uh, and the petition, was it a multi-club petition? Did you send one petition for both Mammoth and, uh, and uh, Fuse to try and plead your case, try and say the the lockdown, why this is happening has been lifted. Uh, this is this was a multi-club kind of petition. Yeah, I believe it was a petition from CUDA on behalf of the three clubs, Extinction, Mammoth and Fuse. Uh, so I don't think CUDA could form because CUDA okay. were closed over Easter. So this was, it was a perfect storm, Steph, of, you know, this, this coming right before Nationals, Easter coming, so no one could really meet to talk about it. So CUDA couldn't formally come together and actually get behind us. Um, but all the clubs, are, um, uh, you know, Extinction, Fuse, uh, Mammoth, all really push hard to to pretty much petition after and say, hey, please let, let us let us in, pretty much. Um, and I know that CUDA would have, you know, uh, have, I know Nat's been great at supporting individual players and reaching out to us and making sure we're okay. So I'm sure CUDA would have had our backs as well. Um, but yeah, just it's just been the perfect storm in terms of, of timing, Steph. And, uh, you know, we obviously think that after ultimately made the right decision as well. Um, it's about protecting people and protecting our player base. You know, the last thing we want are headlines of, you know, frisbee players uh, track UK strain of coronavirus into into our into our parliament. Um, yeah. Yeah, but uh, it is it is it's disappointing. It is disappointing yeah. not to be able to. Well, well, let's talk about uh, that disappointment. Lo and behold, as you said, the, the decision's been made. The uh, appeal has been denied. Uh, and as much as you understand the denial, what is the, uh, what's the vibe, I guess, on, on the team, on the team chats? And uh, how, how are you guys personally uh, handling the feels with uh, a season worth of preparation for let, let's call it let down uh, for lack of a better word at the, at the moment but how are you guys personally and your teams coping with this decision i guess uh, i guess i am yeah i am disciplined i can't go um I, it's a bit it's a bit stressful with uni because i'm do, currently doing one of my final years of uni so a little bit relieved that i have an extra four days to study <laughs> But besides from that, it is quite disappointing because I have put in a lot of effort. Disappointing on behalf of the team because we've had people who have had this campaign cancelled on them twice now, so they've never actually represented Fuse yet. 
So they've gone through two campaigns worth of training only to have it pulled away from them at the last minute. And then I think this is my third campaign now that's been taken away from me because of this, because I had last year's nationals, then worlds, and then nationals again. So this is be my third time I've, I've, they've said no. So that's pretty sad when I think about it like that. But I am ex I am looking forward to next year because we're just doing the same thing I did last year, which is, hey, the team is great. I cannot wait to show everyone what we can do next year. So I'm trying to look on the bright side of next year and not dwelling on this year too much. Hard to do, but uh, good on you for putting your head in the right place. Uh, Liam, anything to add to that uh, about the, the men's side? Uh, I imagine some yeah. similarities for sure, but anything else? Yeah, more or less, like, uh, my heart like breaks for rookies pretty much coming in excited uh, to play their first season, you know, go out, get noticed by, like, people who are interstate, start making a name for themselves on the scene. It's really hard to do that, you know, if, if you're in Brisbane, don't play any warm-up tournaments to go out and actually start turning heads. So ultimately I worry about uh, the uh, youth development, how this will impact selections for those under 24 teams because there are people who are more incapable, who are absolute studs, um, who just won't get to see elite competition um, for, for two years, Steph, which is insane. Yeah. Um, uh, so that's, that's why my high breaks. For me, nationals come and go, you know, this is just another roadblock. I'll be, I'll be around next year. Um, we'll come with that, that first seed back, um, but yeah. yeah. A bit of worry about uh, player retention. I know, like worldwide right now, uh, even even just the the potential for players to slip over to disc golf right now seems uh, <laughs> a, 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 there's a, a major turnover. So uh, we're just hoping that when this is all over, uh, we retain our players, we retain our interest, as you said, uh, for veterans who have come and gone, and you know, like Dom, three three campaigns in a row taken away, it hurts, but. I mean, we've had many campaigns. You guys have had many campaigns. Uh, it is right of uh, to hear that, of, of having a little extra soft spot for those rookies and up-and-comers that are, are trying to find a platform to uh, to show themselves off. So uh, anyhow, we are the AUC is going on without you guys, uh, with our, our hearts breaking, of course. Uh, however, it's still going on, so so let's let's talk about the competition that will happen. Uh, th there is no bias now in your prediction making because you don't you don't even have the opportunity to pick yourself. Uh, and, and I must say, Max Halvin, I was chatting to him, and I was surprised to hear he thought that Fuse would have a chance on the top four this year. Uh, so I'm happy to hear that the Brisbane Ladies Club has come around, at least in the mind of Max. But uh, I will ask you both uh, for each division. You can uh, take the easy road and say you agree with the other, but we'll start with Dom. We'll start with the women's division. Uh, give me the four semifinalists, so the, the top half of the draw. I, I think there's eight teams in the, the competition. And uh, and who's going to come out on top of those four? Top four. I have to say, I think Manly, Ellipsis, Rogue, and then I would have put us in top four. So, I have to, so I'm not sure. Should it be worse? Maybe. Oh, well, maybe Alice has gone to Z. So. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> I've forgotten half the teams. It's been every year. Factory, yeah. Fat. Okay, and uh, and then how does that shake out to a champion? Uh, we, we obviously don't know what routes they might might take, but uh, of those four, uh, is there a clear winner? I think I think the final is going to be Manly and Ellipsis, and then I think it's just a toss up on the day who's going to win. Personally, okay. Uh, Liam, in the women's division, any 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 difference? Anything more sure about? Um, I'm really interested to see what the uh, what comes out of New South Wales. Um, obviously, there's been like a bit of turnover uh, with Rogue as well, like some really notable departures. Um, so it'd be really cool to see, you know, that core who's stuck around and, and what they do. I think they're in with a chance. Danny's with Manly, didn't you? I think Danny's playing with Manly, yeah, yeah, which you know, it's, so it's kind of impossible to not pick Manly in the yeah. finals. And the ellipsis are ellipsis, you know. Mm. Um, they're always going to be the ones to beat in the women's division for sure. Okay, four-time champions as of now. I think they've won every championship since I left. Uh, 
my last <laughs> week in Australia was a national championship, which was their first uh, championship. And uh, since then, they've done nothing but win. So let's shift gear to the Open or men's division, however you choose to call it. And uh, we'll start with Dom again this time. Uh, I guess uh, not in the division, but Dom, do you have a uh, an inkling who's going to uh, come out on top there, uh, top four, or just a champion? Oh, I have no idea. <laughs> who, would you, who would you like to see? Get to pick a... To win the men's? Yeah. I can only think of two teams, and that's Colony and Outbreak. So, so the... Outbreak, Outbreak, you heard it here first. <laughs> Outbreak, well, the, uh, you're not the first one. Max likes it too, and I think it's a heck of a year for Outbreak to win a pandemic uh, uh, AUC championship. Uh, and they, they've been off the radar, as I understand too. They haven't played uh, many interstate challenges. So. Or, or, or tournament, so they, they could well be there. But uh, Liam, you're in this division. Uh, maybe you have a a bit more breadth of, of the competition. So so who's it going to be? Uh, give us the top four and give us a, this year's champion. I'll tell you who gets me really excited, Steph, and that is Fishwick. Obviously, home advantage, but um, you've got like an incredible core of boys who have played together, who are young, athletic. And each year have just been getting better and better and better. So like you've always like Calvin Sandbridge, uh, you got Manabo, who's hopefully um, you know fit and healthy, um, and you got people like the old heads like AJ coming back, uh, which is pretty phenomenal. You've also got the uh, the big dog Rob De Hollander uh, donning the orange. Um, yeah, I've, I've heard <laughs> I've heard about his move. Uh, yeah, you get. He's a, a big, unmovable unit down there, so uh, adding some, some size and strength. Yeah, just him slinging a pie to Bill is all you need to win a championship. <laughs> um, yeah, Bill I thought, I thought the pie was I thought the pie was slung to him, but uh, I guess it goes the other way too. Bill Coleman. He's dishing them up. Yeah. So, right. so uh, I think it had me really excited. Um, they're definitely probably my four in, in the finals. Three, we're going to go Chile once again. You got a really good young core putting it all together. You know, Michael Kelly, Josh DeBell, uh, Lapari, all this, of those boys. Just... This is a gag free Chile, the first uh, gag free Div One Chile team. Is that? I think he's playing Div Two. I think so. Gak come and goes in between. You know, the the Div One Div Two scene. He'll be back next year. Div One, you know how he is. Surely, um, okay. So Chile, that's the first I've heard of them on the radar. But uh, I think they had a couple. <laughs> Couple wins at the Canberra Cup, I heard of. So there, there's two, and then how are we shaking out up top? Uh, you've got, uh, you've got, uh, Sunder, Lado, and Sunder Mark next, I think. <laughs> slice I think and Lado dice. Uh, slice and dice, yeah. Uh, which one? Which one? Slice. Which one slice is Lado, and dice is Evans. All right, so Slice are the, the one seed. I think that's probably fair. You know, they've got Gan, they've got Shep uh, coming off the ACL injury as well. It'll be interesting to see what form he's in. Um, and then, you know, but once again, uh, Mark Evans to, to James Bray is also enough to get you into the top four, I think. So it'll be interesting to see um, who battles it out. I got my money on Fishwick, though. I really reckon they'll, they'll make a, a big push uh, this year. Okay, so we got a Fishwick Chili Sunder Sunder. So we're gonna have an yeah. old school inter club final like the old Colony Colony days. They're totally different now. Uh, and, and you like Slice to take the title. So uh, no, Fishwick, Fishwick. Oh, Fishwick. <laughs> All right, look at this. Uh, he's, uh, you said you started with them as your number four, but I'm uh, I'm happy to to see that uh, they're right up One in it now. Oh no, you're right. No, it'll be fine. Fish will take it home. Yeah, yeah and anything can shake out uh, once it's all started. Um, well, listen, I think that's going to be all for for us today. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Uh, first off, my my heart's out to you for a long season and uh, the Yanks carpet right before the the ceremony. Uh, so my feels for you guys uh, and your teams, uh, please send my love and the love for Multi TV. Uh, but mostly for giving us your time and uh, your expert insights on what is coming up uh, in Australia and which is pretty unique, one of the few nationals in the world right now. 
So thank you very much for your time. And uh, we look forward to hearing more from you very soon. Appreciate it, Steph. Thanks, mate. Thank you. Thanks, guys.